Welcome to Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, a weekly show about varnish technology presented to you in two minutes or less. My name is Thais, you've probably seen me before in these videos. I'm still the technical evangelist at Varnish Software. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to run Varnish on the AWS cloud. So that's Amazon Web Services. Now, interesting to know, in last week's video, we talked about running Varnish in the cloud on the various marketplaces in general. So I highly advise you to have a look at that one because it contains the why and the what. And in this video, we'll talk about the how. So I'm gonna put two minutes on the timer and explain to you in two minutes or less how you can run Varnish on AWS. The installation procedure starts in our AWS console. You click to launch a new instance, but instead of looking for a regular one, we're going to the marketplace and we're typing Varnish Enterprise. We select Varnish Enterprise 6 for Ubuntu, and we get an overview of the associated costs for licenses and infrastructure depending on the machine size. We're going for a large image and choosing a standard configuration, but we do want to add a tag with the name to easily identify it in the list. We're picking Varnish here. We're continuing to the firewall setup where we get the standard ports we need already set up by the image. And then it's a matter of launching the image. But before we do, we will create a new SSH key, which we call Varnish and which we'll use to authenticate ourselves when logging in via SSH. We launch the instance and minutes later, you have a full blown Varnish enterprise server. So we can then select it and open up the IP address via HTTP. And then we get our landing page, which contains a link to an instruction guide containing all the information on how to use it. But we already know what we want to do. So we're logging in via the command line and using the SSH command, we use the freshly created varnish key and going to Ubuntu at the IP address. And then we're going to run a command to edit the VCL file located in etc varnish default.vcl. We're removing some placeholder code, which displays the landing page. And we're going to change the IP address with the IP address of our actual web server and the port of our web server. We close the file. We edit the system CTL settings. So this is system D with the runtime parameters. And instead of choosing for 256 megabytes of caching, we're going for two gigabytes. And then it's just a matter after you've changed the parameters of restarting the varnish surface and you're good to go. So now we can refresh the page and all of a sudden we see our web platform. That was easy, am I right? It was just a matter of finding the right image in the marketplace, spinning up the machine, and have a full blown Varnish Enterprise server that is pre-installed and pre-configured. Very easy, very powerful. And in next week's episode, I'll do exactly the same thing, but on the Azure cloud by Microsoft and other platforms will follow in future episodes. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, as always, I hope it provides value to you and see you next week.